How are you guys doing today? Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege. Today, Wednesday, October 9th, just a day away from the start of week six. It feels like these weeks are now coming at you very, very fast. And on today's show, we're going to talk about some of the games and some of the more breaking news, obviously, with the biggest one being Drake May being named the starter. We're going to talk about that. Also, the Devontae Adams update after the situations have sort of changed with the Jets and the Saints. We'll talk about whether Devontae Adams should even want to go there. We're going to recap the Giants game and also preview a little bit the Ravens and the Commanders game as well in this episode. So make sure to stay tuned for all of that. And before we get started, I'd like to remind you guys, if you guys want to be part of the show, if you guys have any questions, comments, or opinions you'd like to share on anything we say on here, don't hesitate to go and do so, and we want to hear about it as well. You guys are a big part of what makes this show great, and we thrive on your energy and insight. So, if you want to make it absolutely sure that your message stands out and gets featured on the show, there's an easy way to go about that just by using the new Super Chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your Super Chat, and this way it guarantees that your message gets on the air, and it's also a great way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love, and we always appreciate when you guys help us out in that way, and again, when you guys contribute to the show and comment and leave any sort of things in the chat box to make the show more interactive, more conversational. I always love when you guys do that, so go ahead and let us know what you're thinking. Hit the super chat button again, and let's keep the show as interactive and as exciting as possible. We always appreciate you guys doing that for us and being more involved with the show as we as we move on but with that being said now we can jump into the biggest news of the day it was crazy it was a crazy day yesterday for the N- for the AFC East I should say insane day yesterday because of the news obviously of Robert Sala being fired but also the NFL Network reported in the afternoon that the Patriots will be starting their rookie quarterback Drake May in their week six matchup against the Houston Texans. The report was later conf- confirmed by Jory Epstein of Yahoo Sports and I feel like this this was obviously a big story like all the rookie quarterbacks were into the draft and then afterwards and how they all developed and all that sort of thing. We obviously knew Caleb was going to play. We knew probably that Jaden Daniels was going to play. Bo Nix quickly became the the outright favorite in that competition throughout training camp. And the other situations, obviously J.J. McCarthy gets hurt and Michael Penix with Kirk Cousins being there. We kind of had an idea that that probably wasn't going to be a quick start for Michael Penix but Drake May was in an interesting situation where you know they had Jacoby Brissett there and you knew what the situation was right we knew the scenario that eventually this was going to be Drake May's right but for however long it was going to take Jacoby was going to be in there and now it has still hit with a sudden urgency I feel like that I'm definitely not ready to accept the fact that Drake May is going to start already and with that being the case now, you know, he is one of the six rookies that was taken in the first round. And uh, with him now being named the starter, he'll join Caleb, Jaden, Bo as the only other rookie quarterbacks to be starting for their teams already. And that's probably that's probably going to be it, right? Because JJ's hurt, and I don't think Michael Penix is going to play this year. And, um, you know, Drake May now takes over the job very suddenly, like I said, from Jacoby Brissett, who was brought in here, you know, just this year because he is familiar with the New England Patriots. He's a veteran now. He's he's a solid guy, solid backup, you know, to bring in reliable quarterback. Not really going to lose you the game too often with boneheaded decisions or bad interceptions or anything like that, but he's also not going to do anything special. So you kind of know what you're getting with him. Also, his familiarity with Alex Van Pelt, the Patriots offensive coordinator, his offensive scheme his game plan they were together in Cleveland so bringing Jacoby over here with him makes total sense right to get this thing going as quickly as possible but now that was the game plan originally right but now after a one in four start internally they must have felt that that they can't be this bad right because we saw the we saw the upset win in week one and I think that took everyone by surprise including the Patriots so 
when you get a win like that, I'm sort of speculating here that you get a win like that and you're thinking like, wow, like this defense is actually very good, very above average, can make stops repeatedly against some of the some of the good teams, right, when you need it. The running game looks very solid as well. If we could do that, not, you know, get ourselves into trouble too much, that's a great weapon to have. Not a lot of teams say that they're confident enough to run it as well as the Patriots do, at least in that game they did, right? So that's another thing that they had going for them. And they won the game against the, the Bengals team that a lot of people had penciled in as Super Bowl contenders, right? So you start off the year 1-0, and but quickly after that, um, it all kind of fell apart pretty quickly, and they got hit with a hard, hard piece of reality because after week one, it all kind of started to come to light with the real issues that this team had and why, you know, a lot of people had their doubts around this roster because you look at the... Offensive line deficiencies became more obvious as they played, you know, the 49ers, as they played the Jets and these teams like that. Those problems became more evident. Also, the the running game in some of these latest games has not been there. You know, Ramondre Stevenson has had trouble fumbling the ball, so that's kind of stopped everything where it was. Then um, they played better offenses as well throughout the, the course of the last three to four weeks. So their defense, while it is good, you know, it's not going to be able to hold opposing teams to 15, 17, 13 points each and every game. The defense, you know, got their business handled, handed to them a lot of times. So with that, you might rely more on your offense, but the offense really wasn't there because of the lack of skill players that the Patriots have. And again, Jacoby really isn't the guy that's coming in there and going to make wow throws, right? He's going to follow the script, follow the plan, and if it's not there, you know, he's probably going to throw it away or something. Just try not to lose the game, right? That's also what became evident over the last few games, and um, the last four games, they've lost their last four games in a row. They failed to score 13 points in their last three consecutive weeks. They lost to Miami this past Sunday, which I felt like was the last straw because the Dolphins... Over the last two to three weeks, it looked very, very bad without Tua. You know, they had Skylar Thompson in there. They only put up three points against the Seahawks. It was even arguably worse against the Tennessee Titans at home. And then for you to face them now, again, with Tyler Huntley in as quarterback, you would think that, you know, this is an opportunity to get a win here with this team, also in the Miami Dolphins, that doesn't really know what's going to happen with their offense. So the fact that you lost the game, only put up 10 points as well, I felt like was the last straw for this Patriots team. And now also you're looking at this, uh, just where they rank so far through the first five weeks. They rank 31st in total offense so far, and they're last in the NFL in passing yards per game. So all these reasons why... You can understand the change. You can understand why the Patriots are thinking, all right, let's 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 create a spark here. Let's try and get something going. Let's bring the young guy in, right? But also, you could take it in the same way, take all these reasons why the Patriots probably aren't that good and make a good argument that Drake May starting should be the last thing on everyone's mind because of all these bad reasons I just gave out for the Patriots, right? But... um. I am worried, though, just to say, just to say the least, because of this decision, and um, because yes, you're one and four, and all the facts and performances look really bad and things like that. You feel desperate to try and get something going, and I think it's interesting how people respond to a team being one and four in this context with a rookie quarterback, right? Because to me, you can take it one of two ways. Um, the first one, like I sort of alluded to, you're one and four, and you have this sense of urgency, right? Like. Like, hey guys, we got to get this together. We need to create a spark. Let's try and switch things up. Let's bring in the young quarterback, right? We need to turn this around and get back to back to winning, I guess, right? Um, that's one way, right? The pro-productive, the urgent kind of mindset that you need when you're one and four. But also, to me, what how I would take it, I feel like it's more realistic, is the fact that you're one and four and you're thinking, well, we weren't going to be all that good anyway this year. Why is everyone freaking out about the fact that the Patriots are 1-4 and four when at the beginning of the season, and probably still now, they aren't favored to win any of their games? So really, this is exactly what should have happened, and now people are starting to freak out like they need to change the quarterback or something to kind of get back into contention, which 
to me makes no sense because of the fact that everyone had him losing pretty much every game. So this is exactly how it turns out. But now we're feeling urgent about changing something, right? And uh, also, the timing of this, I don't really like it. If you were going to change to Drake May, why not do it against the team that's also struggling on offense last week? Not do it against the 4-1, and one, you know, one of the favorites to win AFC Houston Texans where you're definitely going to get outscored. Um, the quarterback comparison is obviously night and day. Their defense, their defensive line alone is probably going to have a day against that offensive line. And the last thing you need is Drake May to get pummeled in his first game. So start him against the Dolphins or start him next week when you guys go to London or something like that. Um, to start him against the Texans, I think definitely could have been avoided. It's a little crazy to me. And also, you know, they don't have their center, David Andrews, anymore. He's out for the remainder of the year. And um, the offensive line is a major concern, obviously, and no skill players, really, on the outside, other than, I guess, Kendrick Bourne coming back and Demario Douglas looking pretty decent. But still, it's far and away from what an ideal quarterback situation should be. Just obviously look at Jaden Daniels and Caleb now starting to pick it up. I don't, it's not really just on Drake May, but the idea that, um, you know, the Patriots, I don't feel like there was such a need to do it right now. They could have waited a couple more weeks. Maybe you were 1-8, and 1-7 and seven or something like that later on. Then you bring in Drake May, right? There's no real expectations anymore, even less than there already was. So then you bring him in there, don't have to face the Texans the first week, and then you go from there and see how it goes after that. But to bring him in right now, I feel like this first start could be uh, you could lose more in this first start than you could really gain for Drake May. But, um, you know, the, the decision's already made. And with that being said, to close this segment out, I feel like he it could end badly on Sunday with him just not playing very well. But for that, I'll just say that people, with this decision already being made, we got to tame or temper our expectations a little bit now with Drake May. Yes, it's exciting that your rookie's going to play. But nobody should be expecting anything special, right, from Drake May against the Texans in his first start. If it looks really bad, I don't think he should be receiving criticism or anything like that. If you want to criticize someone, criticize the Patriots for starting him in this game. But it should not fall on Drake May. And I thought I needed to say that in case people just watch that game and think, like, this guy stinks. Why do we pick him number three? The circumstances and the context behind it definitely matters. So... Watch the expectations and limit it when Drake May takes on the Houston Texans this week. So that was definitely the biggest news. I wasn't expecting to hear that yesterday, but of course we had to talk about it. And now moving on, going from one rookie quarterback to another in week six as well. We're going to talk about Jaden Daniels now taking over the NFL after another win over the Cleveland Browns. But we're going to preview his next game against a much tougher Baltimore Ravens team in Baltimore. And it's going to be a great game, probably the best game of week six. So we're going to preview it here, give our thoughts, our predictions, and look a little bit deeper into the makeup of these two teams. So stick around. We'll be right back with a lot more right after this break. <laughs> 